Hey guys and gals, my name is Dark Knight. Um, welcome back to Crimson Grey, part number dose. Hey, if you guys remember what happened last time, pretty much I bought this game. I thought it was going to be a romantic comedy. It turns out to be a Yandere game. So yeah, let's go forth because this game made me depressed. Oh god, let's go forth. If so, it was probably follow be followed by another fake note. Asking him to come out of the under that stupid confession tree. Where'd they let him... <coughs> <coughs> Shit. Oh, I let him wait and laugh at him. Jesus, that got me good. But just for a moment, he saw that girl watching it. Could have been her. Da da da. Let's go talk to her. Okay, we just ignore it. Why not? By the time he got to class, John had a new theory. She felt sorry for him. <laughs> he must have looked petty, pathetic, and she recognized his misguided good intentions enough to pity him. Oh, no, no, no more pity. Ugh. The rest of the school day passed and more of a blur than usual. He might be delusional, but part of John still hoped it wasn't a prank. Oh, let's hope so. He headed to his locker, not daring to imagine anything. There was another paper waiting for him there. Oh, no. They shouldn't say... Oh, oh shit. Oh, no. That's a horrible, scary music. Oh, crap. That even looked like it was the same person's handwriting. The verse had a beautiful calligraphy. This one has a herald scrawl. Oh god, if it was a prank, he no longer had any idea where this was going. Oh god. Oh god. I heard running in the background. Oh god, no. He'd already been beating himself up over saying the wrong thing. So this is way too much for John. He had to straight home to get some sleep before he cracked completely. Oh god, we're going to die, we're going to commit suicide. Please, for the love of God, don't commit suicide. The next day, John went as early as possible and approached his locker anxiously. He wasn't sure what he, was, what he wanted to find. Oh no, there was a note this time. There was a chocolate wrapped in foil. It's in the exact center of the bottom of his locker. Ah, oh, shit. John stared at it for a while, and then slid it into his pocket and headed to class. Even though he knew he would be far too early. Oh shit. There was no way he could eat it. If it was really a prank, they might have slipped a lifestyle or something inside of it. That was the kind of his friends thought was funny. Dude, even if I thought I'm like, even if I was really depressed, I'd be like, Oh crap, something's not right here. This is not right at all. But if it's that girl, da da da. It didn't matter now. What happened was someone clearly knew his locker combination and could get in whenever they wanted. <sighs> this could be a real problem. He knew he should come up with a solution before tomorrow, but what? Oh god, we gotta save. Let's save. Let's save. Okay. Uh, tell, us, tell the teacher, tell Miss Smith, try to keep watch on the locker, replace the lock, or leave a note. Oof. This is gonna be tough, but... If I were her, if I was, if I was the real, if I was hit right here and everything, I'd be like, okay. I would do this first. I would try to keep a watch on my locker, and if I see somebody, I go tell Miss Smith. I trust her more than the teacher. Teachers are gonna, not gonna give a fuck. And if Miss Smith doesn't do anything, we pretty much leave a note. Then after leaving a note, they don't do anything. We replace the locker. If that doesn't happen, then we'll just go ahead and run away. Let's see. But we're gonna try to just spend the whole day near the door and hanging out in the hallway. Trying to catch a glimpse of some- Oh god, the music's getting harder! Oh god, but he didn't see anyone. There wasn't any new messages either. Girl, throughout the day, he felt certain that someone was watching him, but he could never tell who. John lingered at school until he was basically the last student, seeing no one. When he finally went home, though, the sense of being watched just intensified until he went to sleep. Oh shit. That's why we don't do that shit. Oh god, I think I got a bad ending. When he woke up the next day, he felt a little better. Things that would be so long as he kept everything in perspective. Maybe. They got an effort to set the mystery of the side, locker aside. John went to his ranch to the rooftop for lunch. They spread out on one side, enjoying the sight of the trees below. Oh no! Midway through the meaningless conversation, John noticed that Lizzie was watching him from the far side of the roof. Her gaze was even more intense than before, so he uncomfortably tried to ignore her and focus on the conversation. No, you don't do that shit! I wish we had a conversation where they would go and talk to her. Looks like I'm fetching trees in full bloom, huh? You really believe in those stories? True love and all. I mean, it works, man. 
I got a bunch of bu I got a buddy who just graduated. He swear he got so much pussy under conf confessing under it. Damn. Well, if we kept doing it, then that's not true love, is it? No, no, it's not. Come on, people have been confessing for years. You should just think everyone would just confess under the tree if it did nothing. Oh God, no. Nah, man, I think the tree is full of lust. It doesn't give a tree true love. Just getting laid. Now I feel like somebody's watching me from behind now too. Jesus. That was true. Way more guys would be into it, but it's mostly girls from what I've seen. What do you think, John? I don't know. Please. Oh, come on, don't be like that. You dream of a girl confessing to you under the tree, don't you? Yeah, like that crazy soccer chick. Oh, God, no. No, why did you conf- Oh, no, we're gonna die. The tree is magic, man, I'm telling you. Even if a sad sack like you could get a look in the confession tree down there. <laughs> Dude, don't be stupid, it's just a tree. Whoa, someone has their panties in a twist. Oh, calm down, asshole. I'm telling you, everything goes- Everyone goes there to- <sighs> Only- Peep because people like you keep telling these stories. There's nothing special about the tree. People just believe in special because everybody else says it is. Oh god, no. Girls I think it's romantic. So of course if there's more likely to agree there, and you guys would have to turn someone down in front of the an audience. Please stop triggering more flags on me. That's all it is. Stop triggering flags! Shit man, what the hell is wrong with you today? I'm triggering a bunch of death flags right now. That's what's happening to me, da da da. With an answer like that, you're not gonna get a girl. God damn it, stop! <laughs> he even sounds the tree. It'll god block you now. Oh god, no, please. <laughs> oh god, stop! Ugh. The, that day, John couldn't get to his therapy appointment fast enough. Smith, Smith, Smith. Miss Smith smiled at him when he came in, but immediately saw he was unhappy. Oh shoot. You okay, John? Perhaps some strong formulation? It's not about the fucking drug. No. You know, I feel bad for John now. My last session is to make you feel better. Let down and get comfortable. Miss Smith. Does Paxitine have any visual side effects? Yeah, does it? I sure hope not. Cortex has the highest amount of sense to put a drug in it. And Paxitine is near the final clinical trials. Are you having vision problems? Yeah? John lays back and stares at the window. He was really seeing differently what was it in his head. He stared at a long time before he opened his mouth and started talking. Everything just feels so... Gray. So you are having vision problems. Not literally gray. It's just... The sky today. I remember when I was younger. I always thought clouds were beautiful. Now it's like... There's nothing there. Nothing that matters. I look up and I just don't care anymore. That sounds more like a mental issue. Then, why don't we take more relax? Get more relaxed and talk about it. Oh boy, we could have talked about it more. Taking a deep breath. John did his best, as usual. After talk talking with Miss Smith for long enough, he felt not better necessarily. But at least not miserable. So you felt neutral then. Their session went by in a flash, and then he had, a, had to head home. He shuffled through his routine easily enough, slept filthily, and then returned to school barely more rested. But when he arrived, he found a huge crowd standing and staring. What's going on? You know the tree students like to confess under? Yeah? The words were to make John shiver even though he wasn't really entirely sure. He shifted through the crowd, and then he saw it. Ah, oh, shit, Pickles, I got the yonder route, fuck. A special kind of romance, oh shit, no. The edge of the tree were still burning, but there was- No, please, oh no, no, let's hide this, no, no, oh god, I triggered the yonder route, no, fuck, I triggered the yonder route. Oh, they don't want the yonder route, oh god. What happened? The cops are coming to check it out, but the shop teacher said it looked like an arson. Someone covered the tree in gasoline and burned it down, oh shit. Oh shit. See? This is why we need cameras. I've been telling the principal for years, but he doesn't listen to me. No, no, no one thinks. Dude, every school that I go to in the right here that I went to basically had cameras. Why don't you guys have cameras? That's very that's a very good security reason, no matter what. But the words lit off of my off his mind and John turned away to whatever saying goodbye. Not entirely sure what he was doing. He stumbled straight into his locker. 
When he opened his locker, he discovered a folded note with its exact in center. Like always, he stared at it for a long moment before unfolding it with trembling hands. He stared at the words of the foreign language, wishing he could avoid understanding the conclusion. I didn't like that tree either. Oh shit. It was her. It had to be. None of his friends would be that insane. What would the point of a prank be like that? Yeah! What was the point of her? What did she think she'd accomplish? Should he tell someone? But this wasn't exactly- But dude, we just fucking put our fingerprints in it! Fuck! Oh, he didn't really want to get into that much trouble. John decided to p think he was being stupid like usual. He should need to talk to find her and find out what's going on. Let's put an end to this. Oh god, we're gonna fucking die. No, don't be an idiot. Me. That day, whenever he was in the hallways, he could feel he her eyes on him. With every passing moment, he became more sure that she was burned down that tree. He wondered if a normal person would be afraid now. But for him, it barely penetrated his numbness. He just wanted to find out what's wrong and put an end to it. Oh, we're gonna confront it. Oh no. It took until the afternoon for him to find his chance. When the teacher handed out Simons, he volunteered to clean the roof. John stepped onto the roof and handed it to the far side. After a few seconds, he heard, it he heard the door open again. He ignored it and instead of climbing up at the tank, the upper area was meant to be blocked off. But the janitors had stopped putting the ladder years ago. Oh no. Oh no! He turned and his shock was already coming up the ladder. Behind him, he reached the top. She held her hands close to her chest and shoveled her feet demurely. But there was a spark in her eyes. Oh god, we're gonna die. Hello, Lizzie. How about that? Are you never going to greet me? Hello. I said it. I said it. Then why are you following me? Because I... I... Could this girl really have burned down the tree? It didn't seem like she had it in her. <sighs> Were you the one leaving notes in my locker? Yes. Then how did you know my combination? I... I watched you. Oh no. Were you watching? Who else? What did that for you? Is there another girl? Oh no. No, no, no. That wouldn't be. You wouldn't do that. Surely not. Oh god damn it. John realized that there was no other way in his head. Yet his smile was still moving, asking the inevitable question Why did you burn it down? Because it was a stupid tree. You're so smart. You said it, right? It was an awful and stupid thing, and I hate it, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Oh god no. Oh no. Oh no, it's not because of you, John. I could never do what was needed to be done before. Oh god, no. Now I can. Oh god, no. She wasn't stable. She wasn't even close. What did I get, what did I get myself into? I finally found you. You're the only one for me. Oh god. Part of him knew that he, could, that he should do something. Run away? Call for help? Yet. But why? Huh? Why do you care about me? Yeah! You're, even I'm depressed right now. How can you ask that? You're, you're the best person. You're the only person. Bullshit. I'm just another high school boy. <laughs> no, not even that. I'm a worthless. No, 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 no. Don't say that. That's not true. It's not. Look, I'm broken. My mind doesn't work right. And even the strongest drugs don't make a difference. Yeah. No, that's not true, John. It's perfect, perfect. How can you say these things? Um. Oh, God. I feel like she's going to stab me. The way her words flowed together, addressing him directly one moment in the third person, the next before him almost much surprised. Whatever her she was, it went deep. Oh no. You're not well, Lizzie. You need some help. Ah, uh, you, you said my name! But I can't help you. I'm not worth anything to anyone. Just forget about me and find someone else to take care about. No, no, Kadepa! You're the only person who matters! Oh god, oh god, we're gonna commit suicide. But why? You don't even know me. You don't care about me. I'm just... Just part of your problem. No. It would be better if I was gone. Maybe you get better then. Oh no, we're gonna commit suicide. That's not true, it's not. I love you, I love you, John. I love you so much. Nige nunga yo. I watch you always. You were so kind and perfect. Even to a girl like me. Oh shit, I messed up then. He could barely live and listen to her words. John found himself wandering closer and closer to the side of the building, and she followed him automatically. <gasps> Suicide. So you're so sad, but you're still kind. I don't know how. You should be broken like me, but you? 
I, like I said, I can't help you. Even if you help yourself, you need to forget about me and get real help, no matter what. No, don't say that. You're confused. Just confused. Poor John is so depressed. He's not thinking straight. He doesn't sound like I, how much I love him. Oh God, she has a knife. He needs my help. Oh God, no. Oh God, no. No word froze for a moment, and the knife got knife glinted, and all he could do was stare at its edge. You need someone to care for you. I'll stop anyone who says unkind things about you. Oh God, no. No. No, I should take you to home and keep you safe there. Yes, safe. You need some some help. Where the hell did she get that knife from? And who would she actually use it on him? Ugh, we gotta jump. A second later, John realized it was foolish though. This girl had burned down. Ooh, baby burp. Ooh, baby, another burp. Burned down the tree because he said it was stupid. He had no idea there was any limits to what she might do. Da da da. And would that really matter? He spent nights lying in bed, wishing he had never been born, wishing he had a way to end it all. <laughs> you can't threaten me. John, get away from the edge. It's not safe. He took several steps to the edge before she, before she could stop him and turned around to face her. The back end of his shoes hung off at the edge of the building, nothing between him and a fatal fall. No, don't you dare commit suicide. My love doesn't matter so much to you. Stop toying around with me. No? No, you don't understand. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I got into this. Uh, but what do you even want? You're gonna stab me until I'm yours forever? <laughs> Is that it? Never. I'm going to be good and kind. I will never stab him. Please come this way. I'll take good care of you. Nope. You can't. Maybe you had good intentions. But you need help. And unless you get it, you can only hurt me. That's where we're gonna jump! I will, I will, but just, just don't hurt yourself. <sighs> yeah, I know it's a lie, of course. She was saying whatever it took for him to get away from the edge. Well, time to go. It was exactly how he imagined it would go. He'd stand at the edge and everyone would say all kinds of lies about how he much mattered to them. Because they cared about him in the first place, but not about him. Just about the idea of him. Why are you getting so dark, game? But, but look in her eyes. That couldn't be faked. It might be a twist of love, but she loved him utterly. I... She needs help too. Maybe he could be the one to help her? Assuming she didn't stab him. Oh god, we're gonna die, the jump down! What the hell is... But what the hell was he living for anyways? What are we fighting for, Lizzie? Would you make a promise with me? Hey, but promise? I'll step away. I'll talk to you. Or let you leave notes in my locker, or whatever it is you want. But you have to listen to me and get some help. Can you do that? Yeah. You promise? You promise you won't leave me if I say yes? I won't leave you, Lizzie. Two broken strings. Forever? The ads are stuck in his throat and he hesitated, wondering if he wasn't even making a mistake and saying too much. But at the end, he saw it and nodded. Forever. Oh god, what have I done? Now set the knife down and now... Whoops! As he started to step away, John lost his balance and fell backwards. Suddenly, he was in a free fall. Another between him and a cold pavement. Oof! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god, I'm gonna have this off of you guys. My name is Arknight and I'll see you guys next time.